boys and girls, welcome to another Sunday right here, our Sunday school lessons at ICC Kitengela. Thank you so much to each one of you who has been tuning in on every Sunday, getting to learn from our Sunday school lessons. I pray that you have learned a lot. I pray that you have loved Jesus more. You have prayed more. You have understood the creation story more. Now, we begin a new month, and as we begin it, it's a month where we'll be talking about Easter. Yay! A time where we get to remember the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. So throughout this month, our lessons will be around the life of Jesus, the death, the resurrection, and even when he went to heaven, the ascension and the great commission. So we'll have amazing teachers taking us through. So as you'll be joining on every Sunday. I pray that at the end of the lesson you'll be sharing this link on YouTube to your friends, to your family so that we all grow in our love for Jesus and grow in our community here as children. So starting us off today we'll have Pastor Boni taking the toddlers through the story of the triumphal entry, how Jesus rode into Jerusalem and also teacher Maureen who'll come and talk to the 6 to 12 year olds. So go and grab your Bibles and notebooks and pens. Come, let's learn together. May you have a wonderful Sunday ahead. We love you and thank you so much for tuning in. Bye. Hello, how are you boys and girls? How are you doing this day? I hope that you're doing well. It's me, Pastor Bonfist, and I'm really happy to be here with you. I hope that you've been enjoying your time at home and today, I hope you're ready for the lesson as we begin. Allow me to pray so that we can start. Father, we want to thank you for this great moment that you've given to us, that we get to hear your word, oh Father. We pray that as we hear your word, may you make us understand and may you help us understand everything that you want us to hear. We pray for our friends, we pray for our parents, we pray for everyone to keep them safe. In Jesus' name, we pray this trusting and believing. Amen and amen and amen. Boys and girls, I am so happy to be here to take you through this uh, lesson for today. And the lesson of today, do you know what's the title of the lesson? It's called the triumphal entry. What? Yes, it's called the triumphal entry. Do you know the name triumphal means what? It means rejoicing. It means what? Rejoicing. And we're going to learn about one man. And I'm sure you've heard about this person. Or if you've not heard about this person, Today you're going to know this person, and the name of this person is Jesus. Let's all say Jesus. Yes, we're going to, to read about a, a man called Jesus, who is our savior. We're going to see how he got to a city, a city that is named Bethphage. <clears throat> this city was a special city where Jesus wanted to go. And so the people were really excited. The people were waiting for Jesus just to see Jesus. And that's why the story of today, it's called the triumphal entry because Jesus was going to that city and every other person, even the smallest kids were happy to see that Jesus is coming to visit them. And why is it? Because they had learned about Jesus before. They knew what Jesus could do. They knew that Jesus was the son of God and Jesus was coming to save them. Yes. How would you feel when you hear that someone is coming to save you? Yes, so they were waiting for Jesus because Jesus was coming to save them. And where do we learn this story from? We learn that this story comes from the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 21, from verse 1 to 11. From verse 1 to 11, Matthew 21, verse 1 to 11. And the story is so interesting. So let me take you through this story. So it was the first of the Passover. You know, these people used to celebrate a feast called the Passover feast. And there, Jesus was coming to this city. So when Jesus was coming, he called one of the disciples and told the disciples, hey, go out there and get for me two donkeys. Hello, have you heard that? Two donkeys. How many of you have seen how a donkey looks like? Yes, I know most of us have seen donkeys go around the city or some somewhere. I'm sure you've seen them. Even on TVs, you've seen the donkeys, how they look like. Not horses. I'm talking about donkey. I know we ride on horses. I've never seen anyone ride on donkey. So, yes, Jesus sent two of his disciples. Disciples are the people that Jesus used to walk with. And Jesus was so excited. And imagine what happened. Jesus rode on a donkey. Jesus did what? Jesus rode on a donkey. Yes, 
Jesus rode on a donkey. So he was riding on the donkey and when he got to this city, people were rejoicing. People were rejoicing. How do we rejoice? By screaming, yeah, hooray! You know, different ways of rejoicing. So people were rejoicing. Hooray! Our Savior is here. And others, the others kept even leaves, big leaves. They kept leaves down so that Jesus will not walk on bare ground, but will walk on leaves so that he will not get dirty. Wow, this was really, really nice. And Jesus was happy. The children were happy. Their parents were happy. And every other person was happy that Jesus has has visited them. So many people spread clothes around on the road while others put down branches. While people were putting clothes, others put other branches that were cut from trees. How good was that? That was so cool. And then people shouted, hooray, hooray, our savior is here. God bless one who comes in the name of the Lord, hooray. So everything happened exactly as the scripture would have said. Yes, everything happened how the scripture told us about. So we are happy that Jesus came to save his people. So what do we learn from this passage? So we learn very key things. The people around Jesus worshipped him. The people around Jesus worshipped him. So all these people worshipped Jesus. And in what way did they worship Jesus? One, through rejoicing. We also can worship Jesus in different ways. We worship Jesus through singing. Do you know how to sing? Yes, songs that we sing to Jesus. Number two, how else do we worship Jesus? We worship Jesus through prayer. When we were starting, we started by prayer. So today we worship God through praise and worship. We worship God through praise and worship. But more so, we thank God that he's in our lives, okay? So thank you, boys and girls. I'm going to tell you the memory verse of today, and I hope you will go and write it somewhere and you will memorize it. So our memory verse comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 145, verse 13. Psalms, chapter 145, verse 13. What does the Bible say? It says, your kingdom will never end and you will rule forever. What does it say? Your kingdom will never end and you will rule forever. Our Lord, you keep your word and do everything you say. Our Lord, you keep your word and do everything you say. What does it say? Psalms chapter 145 verse 13. The Bible says, your kingdom will never end and you will rule forever. Our Lord, you keep your word and do everything you say. Thank you. So remember to memorize Psalms chapter 145 verse 13. Yes. And remember also to always worship God through your praise and prayer and in any way that you can worship God. Okay, before I finish, remember, we have to give money for Jesus, right? Yes, it's time to give money for Jesus. That is also an act of worship. When we give, it helps some people that don't have uh, some things like shelter and food. So that's also an act of worshiping God by helping others. So let's remember to give money for Jesus. Our pay bill number is down here. It's 567-935. What is our pay bill number? 567-935. Allow me to pray so that we can meet next week. And if you don't come online, you can always come and visit us physically where we can always say hi to each other, smile at each other. Yes, thank you once again and thank you for watching. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we want to thank you that you are a good God. We thank you that, Lord Jesus, there is no other God like you. This day as we pray, we pray that we continue worshiping you through praise, through worship, through prayer, that, Lord Jesus Christ, you will lead us how you want us to go. We thank you, we bless you, we pray for the coming week, we pray for our Easter weekend, may you go ahead of us. In Jesus' name, we pray this trusting and believing. Amen, amen, and amen. That's for it, boys and girls. See you next week. Bye-bye. Wow. Good morning, boys and girls. How are you doing? It's yet another Sunday. We are here. And God has been so wonderful. How many of us are happy just to see this Sunday? It is, it is a good morning. It is a nice Sunday. 
And we praise God for that. Thank you so much for joining in with us. And let us all enter and listen and learn together. First, let us pray. All eyes closed and hands together. Heavenly Father, we bless your name this morning. We thank you and we honor you. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for this wonderful day, Jehovah. We thank you, my Father Lord, even for making us see this Sunday. It's yet another Sunday when we are going to learn more about you, O Lord. Be with us. Open our ears, our hearts, my Father, as we listen to your word, O God. Use me as a vessel to reach out to all these children that are listening online, O Jehovah Lord. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say it, amen and amen and amen. Praise the Lord once more. I am so excited to be here. I'm so happy to actually be here and to have us learn together. Today's lesson is a very interesting one. The triumphal entry. It can be a lesson that we have all had, a lesson that we've gone through, a lesson that we know, and we can even memorize the steps uh, that would follow. But first of all, let us read from the Word of God, from the book of Matthew, chapter number 21, verse 1 to 11. The book of Matthew, chapter number 21, verse 1 to 11. As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to Beth Phage at the Mount of Olives. There, Jesus sent two of his disciples on ahead with these instructions. Go to the village there ahead of you, and at, at, at once you will find a donkey tied up with her a colt beside her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything, tell him. The master needs them, and then he will let them go at once. This happened in order to make what prophet had said come true. Tell the city of Zion, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey. So the disciples went and did what Jesus had told them to do. They brought the donkey and the colt, threw their cloaks over them, and Jesus got on. A large crowd of people spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds walking in front of Jesus and those walking behind began to shout, praise to David's son, God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was thrown into uproar. Who is he? The people asked. This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The crowds answered. And that is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> So I would, want, I would first of all want to ask, what is a prophecy or what are prophecies? I believe many of you know the meaning and maybe if you want to write, just take your pen and your notebook and just write something down. A prophecy is a message that God told to people about something that was going to happen in the future. He foretold something that was yet to happen. I'm trying to think of what I can give as an example, but just know that it was a message that God told the people about something that was going to happen in the future. According to our reading, we've read that Jesus sent two of his disciples to go and look for a donkey. In the Old Testament, 
The word of God says that Jesus would ride into Jerusalem on a donkey and it happened. In the New Testament, we read it. And so that is one prophecy fulfilled. The second one is when God promised David that one of his descendants would be a king forever. That he would reign forever. And it came true because Jesus is the king. He's still reigning. So when we look at all these things and all the, pro the prophecies that were foretold, we realize that all the prophecies were fulfilled through Jesus' life. Many are the promises or the prophecies that were foretold during those days. And it came to pass. All, all of them came to pass. All of them came to be fulfilled through Jesus' life. And we read many of them in the New Testament. And so uh, what I want to tell you is when God promises according to the scriptures, according to the Bible, according to his word in the Bible, we can be sure that he will fulfill. He will fulfill each and every promise that he has for us. That we should not forget. Now let's continue. As, the, as Jesus was getting into Jerusalem and the, the entry was marvelous. It was, it was amazing. It was fun. People were so happy. People were excited. And they thought, ah, this is, this is the time. And they started worshiping. They, 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 they praised God. They, others were asking about uh, Jesus, others had answers, and all these things brought into together, they, 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 they all were equal to praising God, to lifting the name of Jesus high, to actually acknowledging that he indeed is the king, and indeed he is the son of God. And so there was jubilation, and there was, there was fun, and people waved their leaves on air and people were so happy they marched they sang songs they marched as they walked in, into jerusalem city and they were so happy and they praised god in so many ways they, i believe there are people who, who are dancing i believe there are those who are just singing and they, they did not want to be stopped they wanted to go on and on and on and on and this, this shouting uh, in joy and in excitement is actually equals to what we can do even today. Even without us walking into Jerusalem, we can walk and we can shout and we can praise God in our own way. And, 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 and the Bible reminds us uh, that when Jesus was entering at first, he entered with his disciples alone. And when other people saw, I, they said, no, I cannot be left behind. They all joined and they all praised God. They all worshiped God. They all were so happy. They were excited. And so the best we can do is when Jesus is in us, we are the children of God we can still worship just as the way he was worshipped as he entered into Jerusalem city. We can still worship him even today. And there are so many things we can do. When we worship Jesus, we spend time with him, we worship him in prayer, we worship him in reading the Bible, we worship him in singing, we worship him in attending church services, and above all, we worship him in making decisions with our lives that are pleasing, that we are going to please God. I am going to please God. You should please God. That is a form of worship. And so today, we can worship him. 
even in praise and worship. You can even start singing. You can start worshiping and praising even in your house. And others would actually join you because they will see that you are so excited. They will see that you are so happy. You, 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 are, you, are, you are jumping and dancing and, 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 you know, doing all sorts of things when you're happy. And so they will join you. So all I want to ask all of us, all of us, even in our families, in schools, wherever it is we are, when we can, let us live a life that pleases God. Let us continue in singing, in worship, in prayer, in reading the Bible, in going to church, attending fellowships, fellowship with other Christians. Get to know more about God in your lives. Remember, God came for me and for you. He died on the cross to save all of us from our sins. He died and he rose again. And so he is alive, seated at the right hand of the Father. And so we ask that as many of us would always go out there, talk about Jesus. Talk to your friends who do not know about Christ. Tell them, bring, in, bring them to church, fellowship together with them, and let Christ be known out there. Right? Okay. One thing is you should know is that we can believe everything the Bible says, and the Bible is true. The Bible is true, and we need to follow everything that God does and God instructs us to do. Remember, God fulfills his promises. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, my Father, that you remind us that you came down and you died for our sins. You rose again to save us from the sins, our sins, O oh God, and you have saved us. We thank you, Jesus, for the salvation. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for your love for us. Because God, you loved us beyond everything and you sent us your son to save us. We thank you. As we continue, my Father Lord, with your word to read the Bible, to go to church, to fellowship with other, other, other Christians, to sing praises and worship, help us above all to live lives that can please you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. And everyone said amen. Thank you very much for being with us. God bless you and make Jesus be known to others who do not know him. Bye. God bless you.